This is part 86 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to delete identity user from the ASP.NET users database table using the identity API. What you're looking at right now is our list users view. Against every user in this list, we've got these two buttons, edit and delete. So when we click this delete button, we want to delete the respective user and we want to do this using a post request. So let's flip over to Visual Studio. This is our list users view. Here is the card footer div and within this we've got the two buttons edit and delete. We want to surround these two buttons with another HTML element and the HTML element that we want is the form element. Now when we click this delete button, we want to submit this form. So let's turn this anchor element to button element and then set the type attribute of this button element to submit. So when this form is submitted, we want to issue a post request and we want to post this form to delete user action and we want to use asp-action tag helper so let's change this to use that and to this delete user action we want to pass the id of the user that we want to delete so let's use asp-route-id tag helper and to get the id of the user we are going to use this local loop variable user so at user.id so now when we click this delete button, since this button type is submit, this form will be submitted to this delete user action method, passing it the ID of the user that we want to delete. At this point, you might be thinking, why do we have to do all this? Can't we simply delete the user using a get request? Well, we can. There's nothing stopping us from doing that, but it is not recommended. Why? Well, imagine what can happen if we click on an image in a malicious email where the source attribute of the image is set to something like the following. Notice the source attribute is pointing to the delete user action within the administration controller passing it the user ID in this case 123. So when we click on an image like this the image tries to load a get request is issued and the user with ID 123 is deleted. All this happens without the user knowledge. So the user doesn't even realize that he just performed a destructive delete operation. Here's another reason why it's not recommended to use a GET request to delete data. Search engines issue a GET request to index pages. Now imagine if you're using a GET request to delete data, a GET request by a search engine to index that page will delete data and that's not something we want. So in general, GET request should be free of any side effects, meaning it should not change state on the server. So deletes should be performed using a POST request and not a GET request. At this point, all that is left to do is implement this delete user action within our administration controller. So let's flip over to Visual Studio within the administration controller. Let's include a public async action. This action returns a task of I action result and the name of our method is delete user. This method receives the ID of the user that we want to delete as a parameter. Using this incoming user ID, we want to retrieve the respective user from the underlying database table. For that, we are using user manager service find by ID async method, passing it the incoming user ID. If user is null, that means we have not found the user in the database. So let's send the user to the not found view, displaying this message user with ID equals whatever is the ID cannot be found. Else, we want to delete the user. For that, we use user manager service delete async method, passing it the user that we want to delete. This is an async method. Let's use await keyword and store the result in a variable called result. Now, I'm going to paste a couple of lines of code here. We've already seen this code several times in our previous videos in this series. So let me quickly go over it. If the result is succeeded, meaning if the delete operation is successful, let's send the user back to list users action. 
if there are errors deleting the user, we want to add those errors to the model state and then re-render the list users view so we can see those errors. At this point, let's save our changes and take a look at the browser. We are on the list users view and at the moment, we have got three users. Now let's take a look at the underlying ASP.NET users database table. Notice, even at the table, we've got three users. Now let's delete one of the users by clicking the delete button. There we go. The user is gone. If we refresh the database table, there we go. As expected, we now have only two rows. Delete is a destructive operation. So it's always better to display some kind of a confirmation to the user before actually deleting the data. So in our next video, we'll discuss displaying two types of delete confirmation. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.